Welcome to the History of Metro Online. My name is Seraphim, and I'll be taking you through a journey behind the scenes of how our project came to be. On the 31st of May 2004, I posted a topic on Gearbox Software's forums, who are the creators of Halo for the PC, about a new map I was making for the editing kit, Halo Custom Edition. It was called, appropriately, Metroid Online. Initially, I only wanted to mimic some of the same gameplay features from the Metroid games, because at the time, we didn't have the knowledge to do much of anything with the editing kit for Halo. I started with some simple modifications to the height that Master Chief could jump, which is similar to the way that Samus jumps with her space boots in the Metroid games. I then took the Needler weapon in Halo and replaced the needles it normally shoots with rockets from the rocket launcher to represent the missile launcher that Samus wields on her arm cannon. We had the standard tutorial map that came with Custom Edition, but we needed something more wide open to test out the mod, so we modeled, textured, and released Colosseum, an arena map based off the arena from the movie Gladiator that had the af aforementioned rocket needlers and the low gravity. It was tons of fun, but not many people stuck around to play it because of the crazy lag that the explosions from the rockets caused. I haven't been able to find that version, as it was only available for a limited time for download off someone's hosted site, but here is some footage of me and a friend playing the original version of the map that had low gravity and melee only pistols that offered one hit kills. <laughs> So all of what we had so far was fun and all, but it was time to get the mod rolling. By that time, the Halo Custom Edition community had figured out how to put custom textured weapons in-game, and I was about to do just that. Here you can see the first version of the arm cannon. At this point in development, we didn't have the Samus character biped that we now have, but that didn't stop us from testing out beams. Thus, Frosthaven was born. Frosthaven is a snowy map that many of you may have played already if you checked out our mod at all. It was our first publicly released Metroid map, and even though we didn't have the Samus biped in it, it was unique and fun to play. The power beam could shoot single shots, or power up for a more powerful shot. The ice beam hit and did no damage, but it could freeze your enemy for a brief period of time, and if you charged it, it would also home in on your enemy. The wave cannon had high damage, but was hard to land a hit since it moved slower. And finally, the plasma beam shot out straight shots that did medium damage. New to this map as well was the Morph Ball vehicle. As you may or may not already know, the Morph Ball Metroid Prime is a form you can turn into any time that is a ball that you can roll around as. You can boost in this form and also lay bombs that can help you better maneuver the terrain. Basically, this vehicle was a Warthog that we swapped our model with and used a plasma grenade for his weapon. Normally in Halo, you can see your driver in the vehicle, but we changed the settings so you were unable to be seen. This vehicle didn't really work well at the time as it would only move forward and backward and would not allow you to turn, but it was proof that it could work, so we continued fiddling with it. At this time, there was a big deal going on in the Halo Custom Edition community. A map called New Mombasa that was based off an E3 demo 
of a Halo 2 map that never made it into final game was in development. The map looked great and really had potential, plus some great modders were on that team, including a particular whiz named Supreme Taco. He was pretty darn good with animating bipeds, vehicles, etc., and one day he contacted me regarding our Metroid mod. I asked him if he wouldn't mind helping us by modeling a Samus model to replace Master Chief in our maps. He agreed, and we got what you are now looking at. When we first got the completed model itself, it had no textures on it, so I took it upon myself to learn how to texture and unwrap the skin of the model at the same time, despite having no previous experience. I remember spending a whole day unwrapping the model, and then we used an official picture for Metroid Prime that showed all the angles of Samus, that Lightning then used to make the textures for our blank model. Luckily for us, the community had just exploded with information overflow, including instructions on how to put your own custom biped into a map. Byram, our mod leader at the time, rigged the biped and put it in game using the guides that were now available. At first, the model had many problems such as arms that were dislocated, legs that had gaps in them, and Samus generally looking like a mess. We kept changing the model around, but to no avail, and we later found out that the reason it was separating was because we were still using Halo's Master Chief animations. Frustrated, I decided it was time that I try my hand at modeling a real location for Metroid Prime. If you played Metroid Prime before, you probably recall the Town 4 overworld, the raining place where your ship first lands on the planet Town 4, and a beautiful landscape to take in as you begin your real journey. Well, I took my three years of Bryce 3D experience, which is a 3D landscaping program, and made a landscape in it and exported it to 3D Studio Max. Unfortunately, I only have a few pictures of this map, but it's barely worth mentioning. We tweaked Samus to look a little better by this point, but she still had some massive holes for joints, and when she died she fell apart like a straw house. We also added bombs to the morph ball, but I think that made the vehicle worse overall. Here's a clip that displays what I'm talking about. So anyways, that map sucked, and I made a couple other maps along those lines, but finally, I did it. I came up with my own idea for a map, modeled it myself in 3D Studio Max, and with a little help from some modding friends, got it in-game. The map was called Lost Sanctuary, and was created to resemble some sort of battleground that Samus used to train in with the Chozo that raised her when she was younger. It never got fully finished, but it's pretty much a completely playable map. I created a couple concepts and modeled a few other maps after Lost Sanctuary, but none of them actually made it into Halo, because we were trying to make the mod work before we worried about the maps it would be played in. So back to the drawing board. We wanted our Samus to look wonderful, considering she was the most important part of our mod itself. We had Tiamat, someone who was versed in biped rigging, re-rig our model, but it still wasn't producing the results we wanted. Time for a new plan. Time for a new model. Time for a new Samus. I went online hoping to find the biped of our dreams. I happened upon a forum called Sumian.com where a lot of 3D modelers spent their time posting works in progress. A modeler named Livewire had started working on a 3D model of Samus Aran there. It was nearly identical to the GameCube version. We had to have this for our mod. I contacted Livewire, and within a week I got a response. He allowed us to use the model for our mod. We set the arm cannon up as a weapon, and animated it so it looked like it was charging, and that the end of the cannon opened up as if it was firing a missile when you threw a grenade. We also had our friend Jawrain help us model a 3D heads-up display concept I came up with. I modeled the 3D components myself, and he modeled the visor. Next came setting it up to put in game. We quickly got to work at rigging it. I handed it over to the ghost. He got it on for us in about a week and we had a rigged Samus, but still only had Master Chief's animations. About a week or so later we had new animations for our new biped and she was looking great. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. Now. Right. Now. Right. Now. Me and Byram also created another map called Citadel to test out some concepts we came up with regarding double jumping and the morph ball. I'll let this clip explain itself. The person I had started talking to named Scooby was also working on a new map for our mod at the time to replace my sad excuse for Talon 4. The current version of Talon 4 that was shown in our first beta test video was created. Since our original version, everything has been scrapped and it was a good feeling to know that we have accomplished this much despite our vain efforts in the past. I was primarily working on scenery to go on our maps at the time and created models such as a Metroid, Samus's ship, a zoomer, a flicker bat, 
and a Chozo statue. I also created the door model with animations that was used for Talon 4. Like all good things, there's always a flip side, and this recent progress was no exception. July of 2006, our Talon 4 map was leaked and posted on halomaps.org. Hundreds of people had downloaded it within a day. Eventually, we embraced the link and offered it to fans so they could try it out as an unfinished version of our mod, despite its shortcomings. Frustrated with the exploitation of our work, our mod's progress slowed to a standstill as we all went our own way, and the mod was left alone to collect dust. Fast forward to April 2007, and Metroid Online was in full stride again. Kirby, who's best known for his work on his Sonic, Mario, etc. maps, and I started talking about the Metroid mod and the fact that after a couple years, we still couldn't get the Morph Ball working the way I wanted it to. He told me since he just made a script for Halo that allowed you to turn into a vehicle at any time for Sonic Extreme and the Sonic Mapping Team, which allowed you to go Super Sonic, you should probably be able to figure out how to get the Morph Ball working. So it went, and he accomplished it in just a couple of days. He figured out in days what we'd slaved over for years. It didn't stop there, as he also completely overhauled our heads-up display to look like it does now, an almost picture-perfect version of the original one from Metroid Prime. That leaves us where we are now. Wave of Lag, who was on the team for a brief period but is now extensively helping us, is currently fixing up the animations and beam cannons to where they look nearly identical to the original, along with the help of the lag. Leet, a whiz with shaders, animating, and particle systems, helped us create all the new content for our beam cannons. Kirby is still helping us fish, finish up the tweaking on the morph ball and with scripting. Lightning is assisting us in finalizing our maps and with some texture work. Things are coming together, and for the first time in three years, it seems like we can finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. Now comes the best part of our history. You. Our fans have been patient, kind, caring, and passionate about our mod. You've accepted what we've accomplished despite our limitations with the engine we are working on, and hopefully appreciated what we've done up to this point. Here are some highlights of some content and comments.
for those of you who are wondering, the Ghost did put Samus in the Halo single player campaign once and said it was a lot of fun to play as her, but I never got to try it out. We don't currently have any plans on a single player mod at this time. I want to thank all my teammates past and present. Lightning, Kirby, Wave of Lag, Leet, Scooby, Mythos, Killa, Byram, The Ghost, and I'm sure many more that helped us along the way. I also want to thank my wife for supporting me and putting up with me working on this sporadically for the three or so years I've been working on it. Thanks to Grant Henry at MetroidMetal.com for all the advice. I wish to thank everybody who's downloaded and played our maps that were released so far, and thanks to everyone for the awesome support you non-seasonally give us. Thanks to some of our beta testers specifically, Battle Duck, Manta Ray, Baturkin, Elmo, Pixie, Black Rose, Emu, Odishis, Ja Rain, Spaceman Spiff, and all the others. Thanks to official Xbox Magazine Euro for posting an article about us, even if it was bad, and all the other sites that did a feature on us, including Kotaku, Four Color Rebellion, All My Base at GameSpot, GameBurst.com, Halo.Bungie.org, Dig.com, and finally GameTrailers.com for featuring some of our videos. Lightning here, shouting out to everyone who's helped with the project over the past few years, and of course Seraphim for sticking by me for the past three years. Okay, bye. Thanks to Seraphim for letting me work on a mod for one of my favorite games ever. Thanks to Lightning, Scooby, and Ghost for working so hard on the mod when I was absent for like a year, and thanks to the community for following the mod this long. It's going to be good.